And I, I would say that's your society court. Yeah. I was just like a little disappointed because he was the most like anti, you know, spirit guy in the book. So um I really enjoyed it though. At first it was like the wording got me a little bit and I would have to reread, mm-hmm. like go back a few sentences, reread it because like the words that were used in it caught me up a little bit. But as the book went on, it was easier for me to grasp, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you have to read the Enlightened Gardener revisited. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one I have. Yeah. I Isn't lost that, my copy. Uh, so I'm going to have to get another one. Is yeah. it a sequel? There's a sequel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. The Enlightened Gardener Revisited. And I thought that yeah. one, oh, right. Martine and I were talking about, we read that one first by mistake. Oh. <laughs> Not realizing that. But yeah, I mean, the sequel to it, right? You're reading it, Lynn, right? Yeah. Yep. It just is chock full. It's unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just love how the story unfolds. You know, um, here we go again, how this gardener, right? This man is a gardener and he's just so sure of what he knows. And, um, you know, these psychologists are... Uh, feel the need to come and talk to him so they can learn more. And then they're, you know, already their lives have changed. That's what I really love when when you see this, that their lives are changing. They don't really know like how it's happening. It's interesting. And um, uh, I forgot the lady's name, but she already was sharing this with her clients and she sees the impact that uh, her clients are having as opposed to what they were before, talk going back into the past and digging things up. Just fascinating, fascinating. You found that too in yeah. your coaching practice, the things yes. you were telling me. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Do you have an yeah. example like that? Well, people, yeah, absolutely. You know, I would have, this was, oh gosh, several years ago, I had a group of women and I did like a 21 day. It wasn't the principles because I didn't know the principles back then, but one lady was on our call and uh, she was lovely and she had a lot of um, drama in her life. And uh, she would say, you know, this, she would compare, this is a good version of myself. Now, how do I stay here at this version? And then, you know, a couple of days later, she'd say, oh, now I'm back to my old version. Now I'm depressed and I'm sad and I'm angry. And uh, she would want to literally, she spent many years in therapy. She would definitely want to go and dig back in her past. And she said, I think I'm missing something. There's something there that I haven't seen that if I think I could see it, I would uh, feel better. And uh, that just, that just wasn't the case. But but going back that way, back then, for me, I see it now. I, like most therapists, and I'm not a therapist by any means, I didn't see that when they're going back, that it's through a memory, that it's through a thought, rather, you know, that, that uh, you're just back in your habitual pattern of thinking, you know, and, and to get somebody to come out of that, so to speak, it's really by noticing the mood that you're in, low mood, or, you know, how you're feeling. But um I, I didn't have that um, understanding back then. But yeah, people definitely are very much tied to going into their past. I've had, uh, I'll just share this quick one. Uh, um, this lady that uh, she had retired, she was a nurse and uh, she was big into eating at night. And that's what she came to me for. And she said she just felt the urge. She just had to eat and uh, that was it. And um, she just felt she was addicted to food. And she saw herself making some progress, but she would say to me often, it feels weird to feel good. I'm not used to feeling this way. Wow. Yeah, and, and then and then she would want to go like the next week or whenever we had it for this other thing I was doing. She'd say, well, no, I reverted back. I reverted back. I went back to my old habits. I ate this, I ate that. And she said, as strange as this sounds, that feels more normal for me than it does to feel good. Wow. 
Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. We yeah. gravitate towards, com you know, it feels yes. comfortable to just be in the same mindset, I think. Yeah. If that's what you're so accustomed to, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, people are so used to just struggling with trying to do something about their thinking that uh, obviously that makes things worse. But this is this whole, you know, understanding takes people obviously far away from that because it's not really about the content of your thinking. And that's interesting for people because that's all how they identify themselves with is their content of thinking their story. So it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, it goes along with, I, I marked a couple of places when I was, when I opened the book up a little bit ago. And um, so what I've got here on page 94, and I think there's a relationship here. When mind and soul are in unison, you will experience mental well-being. When mind and soul, I mean, you know, I think of mind, big mind as soul. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But he had little M mind. So I think that, you know, more refers to the personal mind. He had little M mind and soul when mind and soul are in unison. I think that's what Sid meant. But anyway, Peter and Janet laughed. Yes, and then they go into yesterday, you mentioned consciousness to us. So I don't, and then later on he says, well, you could say that universal consciousness is the power that enables us to experience reality. Mm -hmm. And the purer thoughts are, the higher the state of consciousness we live in. That doesn't say anything about, you know, mind and soul being in unison. What do you, what do the rest of you make of that? Well, your mind would have to be quiet. Your personal mind would have to be quiet to get to your soul. I say get to it, but to feel it, right? So really your, your mind is quiet, your personal mind. You have to go through your personal mind, so to speak, maybe to get to the soul. But when your soul is quiet underneath the layers of that, I mean, I'm sorry, when your personal thinking is quiet, underneath the layer is always your soul. That's how I see that, but I don't know. Like George Prinsky says, no, you can hear the flute when the whole brass band is playing. Yes, there you go. That's a Bruce Springsteen line, no kidding. <laughs> no, it's uh, George wanna... Prinsky, sorry. Oh, 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 I heard Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> That's so true. I love how he said that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> really? He said that? Did he say that? That's funny. Yeah, George. Um, Jack. That's a Jack Pransky, isn't it? George. That's George. George says that? So that's where Jack got it, because it's in the curriculum we wrote. It's like a brass band, and you're <laughs> listening for the really quiet flute. Maybe Jack got it from George. I don't know. It's probably a common like way it. to explain it. Like yeah. It. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like I noticed myself, I'm just not willing to spend much time in the crap. Yes. I Me just, too. Me too. Uh, it's so unappealing. Yes. <laughs> it's become really unappealing. Because yeah. I've had some weird things happen recently, and I have no interest in going there with my thinking. Absolutely. Like there is nothing to be obtained by yeah. my thinking about this weird thing, these weird things that have happened. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if you didn't have this understanding, right? <laughs> I'm curious for um, both you, Lynn and Lori, because you've been practicing the principles for so long. When you first like started to learn about them, was it, hard for you to stay in that good feeling like did you find yourself reverting back to your old thinking a lot because that's how I feel 
always a lot of the time and i actually had an insight last night but it was an insight that i've had two or three times before already and it was that was the first time that that's happened i'm like huh i wonder why this same insight is coming back again um and it made me think a little bit on it think about that it's like my mind is going back to kind of old pattern of thinking and then kind of coming back to understanding again yeah yeah so yeah it, it goes from here to here so yeah. it may be on the way down yeah <laughs> 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 to re you catch it on the thoughts that are caught in your throat on the way down. <laughs> but that's great, you though, see you see something, you see something, uh, Julia, you know? Yeah. You know, I think when I first learned, I was trying, like everybody else, I'll come clean, trying to figure out from the intellect. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I feel, I feel like um, I'm in a low mood. I'm in a lousy mood. Oh, Lynn, it's just thought, but that didn't do anything for me because I didn't see thought deep enough. Because if I did, I always say I wouldn't be, you know, I would let it go. I wouldn't be thinking it. So it, it's, it's a, it's just when you see things, you see things, you know, and the more deeper your grounding and understanding is, it's like magic. Like Lori's saying, you don't want to spend time in the, in the minutia you know, as I could go back there too. It's just, you know, turns right back on the way you think about certain things. It's automatic. Yeah. And you're right. It feels lousy. And it's, um, you could see why, you know, <laughs> this just came to me, but you could see why people in the world are so messed up, right? I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be mean by saying that, but you could really see that when you don't realize that you're even thinking, and most people have no idea they think, and they're buying into all this stuff that's going around in their head, it's no wonder there's so many, you know, people struggle with so much. It's so deceiving. It's so deceiving. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It also, the recurring thoughts, people you know we have between 60,000, 100,000 thoughts per day, and 95% you had them yesterday. Yes. And, and you just keep recycling the same thing. And the one that you put so much attention to, so it's like the algorithm on Facebook. You now, when you watch it cute videos, cute kitten videos, well, you get more cute kitten videos on your feed. Yes, there you go. And yes. as you look more to your thoughts and examine it, oh, what makes me feel this way? Where do I, how long is going to last? And all, and you just, and then you just pass more time. So the feed just brings you more of the same. Yeah, absolutely. That is really good, like, um, Co like correlation to the algorithm of like how you know things pop up on your phone all the time what you're looking at that's yeah. i feel like that's <laughs> an easy thing to explain to people um when they're first learning about this stuff because it's it's so real like it's yeah. i don't even know yeah absolutely the thing is that Many people try to, because they don't know, but just thinking of the coaching that I used to do, people used to try to figure out why they feel depressed or sad or angry. And when they think they've healed it, so to speak, and it comes up again, they think they have more work to do on it to not feel this way anymore. And, you know, when you just see it's just a probably thought that just ran out automatic all the time. And, you know, just because you, they think they've associate that they're still feeling and thinking it, they haven't healed it in a way. So there's so many misunderstandings just around that alone. You know, I've done a lot of work. I can't understand why I still get nervous talking in front of a group. You know, and I used to be petrified to talk in front of groups. Sometimes, honestly, I still am, but I see that I'm creating it. I see that there's, that doesn't mean 
there's something about me. And I just see it as little, you know, I see it for what it is. And then soon enough, I forget about it because I'm focused on talking. But when you don't know that, it's, you know, you, you're spinning your wheels. Or the therapist that gives, especially CBT people, you know, they get those oh, really? homework to have a, a, a journal of their thoughts, yes. right? And what I was, oh, I feel this way, what I was thinking. And I tried to explain, that's after the fact, because by the time you're aware of it, gone. but he's exactly. already at the next thought, no? And, Good point, yes. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then great, they just put point. more attention to what they don't want. Man, no wonder you feel like shit, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. It's so true. It's so true. And it's so innocent. It is. Right? When all you have is what's going on in here, yeah. and you don't realize that that's what it is, <clears throat> that's all you have to work with. Exactly. And if that, you don't like where you are, it of course it would be like human nature to just try to figure it out. And it's not in the figuring out, it's that's the opposite direction. It's just letting it go, just seeing it for what it is. I mean, my God, you know, boy, I know life is different for people who see that. Yeah, exactly. You know, even on a deeper level lately, you know, I had another grand uh, grandson and my granddaughter a couple of years ago. I see that more and more like we're so perfect. We're really designed perfectly. We didn't come into this world to uh, do something about our thinking. We don't we weren't made to carry that burden. You know, we don't, we don't have to beat our heart every day. We don't have to turn digestion on when we eat. The more that I see we're just really designed the right way, people just don't know it. And they're doing intermittent fasting because of this or whatever. You know, maybe there's some validity in it. I don't know. But that's why we got a digestive system. That's why we got these hormones, gremlin and whatever the other one is, the satiated one and the hunger one. The more I look at us, our design, that spiritual design that we're housed in that physical body, we, we wouldn't come in this world with, with the way that people are now. You know, we just, it's sad. It really is that we don't really see how we're really made or what we're made of in, in the intelligence that lives and breathes us. I mean, we were all babies at one time. How did we get adults? How do we get this age? How do we get like this? right? <laughs> it just automatically happens. It's crazy when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, Actually, we've never, we're made for that. Like, you no, know, if I, I love that snow globe. Yeah. <laughs> and then if I just, uh, no, if you invite, okay, go down snow, go right. down snow, <laughs> go down snow. Uh, right. Yeah. Going to any faster either. It agitates it more. That's a great There metaphor. you go. There you go. By trying to push it down, you're agitating it even more. Yeah. Wow. Right? By trying to do anything with our thinking, we're okay. really agitating ourselves even more because in effect, we're saying there's something wrong with it. It's just a passing thought. There's nothing wrong with it. So what? Yeah. And, you know, I'm always- it doesn't mean I anything. It doesn't, but I'm always curious what people Google about thought. Well, I don't know what I was doing something one day, probably writing a blog. <laughs> I go on there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have an intrusive thought. What do I do about the intrusive thought that I don't want? It's thought you don't have to act on every thought. And I think that is something that people don't realize, especially people who react pretty quick. They don't see it for what it is because innocently, like you say, they don't know but we don't have to act on everything that comes across our minds or we don't have to say everything that comes across our mind. You can have the thought, just leave it alone, it'll pass. But that, that's that freedom and free will, oh my gosh, right? I mean, what a gift, incredible. 
I wish I knew yeah. this in the corporate world. I created lots of chaos in the corporate world. <laughs> I was defending uh, my battles back then. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, you know what I find now? I, I shouldn't say, you know what I find, but you know, you do see people from love and understanding more and more, but I'd rather not be out in the public anymore with, with, I just, you know what I'm saying? It's less appealing to me to be with people who don't have not no no this is awful but I just, unless you're unless you're up in front teaching them yeah you know, exactly the I just want to teach those people I don't want to be amongst them and live in that chaos or, or not that I do, but yeah it's dear I live in near Ottawa where is this the chaos right now oh the truck drivers are all there right so yep. how's that going well it's I have no go to downtown Ottawa that's what I do. <laughs> so what is it that they're supporting um, each other because of the vaccine? It's no, oh, I thought it was because of a truck everything. driver was in an accident and they, was that? No, the, uh, about, apparently about 80 per five, uh, 85 to 90% of truck drivers are vaccinated. Miss for the one that are not. And when they cross the border, they have to vaccinate the uh, quarantine. So they say, well, it cuts down on their livelihood and they're all up in arms and people are just tired now because now we have to, you know, the third dose and people, well, where, where we have to, what do we have to? And uh, we had another lockdown and all those kind of things. So people are just sick and tired. Yeah. So I, I think uh, that's how it started. But now after that, in, the anti-vaxxer join in. And uh, so, yeah, so just a big... And the first night was my, like, my, well, in Celsius, minus 30. So the first night was pretty cold, right, for them camping. But tomorrow is going to be plus one. Uh, plus one is about 32, 33 uh, Fahrenheit. So it's a big job. <laughs> but um yeah so there's uh those truckers that oh no we no we don't see anybody where do i want need to quarantine no we're just driving along and all, all the anti-vaxxers are wow. joining in are are they any of you on the art felt presence no i used to be long time ago do you know about that julia no maybe you could explain it um uh, Marcia. Marcia presence is i'm one of the coaches on that uh it's a 24-hour zoom room that oh. people can uh come in and there will be a coach there on mm. almost 24 hours a day because of the different time zones mm. so people if uh, they're stressed or feeling overwhelmed or just want you know somebody to chat or whatever so there there is there a 3p coach there um available 24 almost 24 hours a, a, a day and um and there was one lady that comes very often on the art felt present and she's very much an anti-vaxxer <laughs> so she's all <laughs> yay <laughs> <laughs> yeah Wow. Yeah, but it's sure good to have a laugh about it, you know, separate realities. Yeah, the, exactly. Exactly. The separate realities. And they yeah. are sure that their reality is correct. And the right. opposite side yeah. is sure their reality is the correct one. And yeah. it's all made up of thought. That's all it's made up with. Fascinating. What things one person's reading versus what things another person is yeah. reading listening to buying into i saw a cute you know on instagram they'll show you a tiktok every so often not on instagram much but i wanted to see how many people responded to um bill pettit my interviewing bill pettit on my day, i have to admit i was looking at how many people noticed so i noticed this tiktok where and it was really funny this young woman is talking about, um, oh, what was the word she used? Two words that explain what we're, what I just said. Uh, something bias, something consumer bias. I think that's what the word consumer bias. It's whatever you're reading or whoever you're listening to, you're automatically going to be biased in that direction. 
Yeah. It's fascinating. God is everything and everywhere. It is. It, it is. I mean, prejudice is thought. A political but you can't tell thought. somebody. Have you, I mean, we all have seen. We can't tell somebody. It's, no way. It's, it's just thought. It's just thought. No. You know, because no. they'll point at a million things that are not just thought. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this just last night. I mean, I, you know, look at all the years I've been around this. <clears throat> Talking to a very good friend of mine. She's in New York City. I even brought her to at least one, if not more, Sid, Sid talks. It just didn't register <laughs> very deeply. Um, so she's talking about how it really, all the things that piss her off, <laughs> all the things that aggravate her, like, um, oh, what is it about people mostly? you know, she'll watch certain shows and then she gets aggravated that the, like Rachel Ray, she was watching Rachel Ray, who does a talk show, I guess. And it's not, you know, she didn't use the word fair, but she said, I don't get it. These people, they have so much money and they have so much fame and they're the ones who are offered all these deals. Like you're I'm a chemist, make my perfume, you know, let me put your name on my perfume or, you know, the, and she gets so incensed about this sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to point, you know, I, I, I go gentle with her as gentle as I can, because she does get um, re reactive, <laughs> kind of like, you know, the Martine and Lynn's sister. Well, yeah. Rona is like my sister. They can get really reactive. <laughs> if we, yeah. Oh, if yeah. we uh, you know, say something a little that yeah. off for them. Okay. So I said something to her about, you know, well, maybe it sounds like you, you have a bit of a habit about thinking about what's not fair, because she just went on with two other things that were just not fair. She said, it's not about being not fair. I don't, I don't think about it being, you know, so you, you can use the wrong word that'll, yeah. and it's not my fault either. Who could see that? Who could right. see that? Right. That would be the reaction. But there was something else I realized that talking about it being thought, it gets misunderstood. Yes. Talking about it as being our experience yes. that's brought by thought. Yes. Man, that's, that's the difference. Yes. That's the that's yeah. the uh, where the rubber meets the road, so yeah. to speak. And maybe the having... word thoughts confuse people because oh, mm -hmm. I'm thinking I should take my pen. Oh, I'm thinking I should have a glass of water. I'm thinking no. So the the principle of thought and thoughts. I think if you have used a better word, it'd be pretty mm -hmm. less confusing a little bit. I know. Judy Sedgman said, "Why don't you just call it?" Curly Mo and Harry, Harry Mo <laughs> and Curly, you know, from the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Thought is very much misunderstood in general. Never mind, most people don't know about the principle of thought, though we use it, so to speak. They just don't know that it creates their experience. But um, there's so much misinformation about thought that you can really change it, that you have to change your thinking. You know, um, what's his name? Wayne Dyer <clears throat> has a book when he was, I loved him, but his book was change your, which is right. Change your thinking, change your life. Fine. But that looks like you have to do something about your thinking. He was very outside in because he didn't know this understanding. So it's so confusing to people. And what do you mean I leave it alone? It passes. What do you mean? I get fresh new thinking? What? Well, yeah. Have you ever gone to bed in a bad mood and you wake up and you're in a good mood? Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right? Right? It's interesting. But yeah, you're right. Thought is, um, thought is very much misunderstood. Yeah. Actually, I've been um, <clears throat> like struggling with my family because... I have been taking the heart of service courses and I want to do life coaching and mental health coaching. And I'm like apprehensive about sharing it with my family because they're so anti-therapy. 
Like there's so much stigma around therapy and they've seen therapists that haven't helped them or made them feel worse. And so it's hard for me to come from like an approach to where they can understand it, or at least something that's positive where it's like right off the bat, they feel good, or at least they might not understand what I'm saying, but they have a feeling like, oh, this is different. Like my niece called me the other day after our first heart of service meeting. And she was saying, um, she's going to see a therapist next month. And I told her like, oh, I just took this like therapy, like coaching course. And she said, oh my God, can you be my therapist, please? She said, was it fun? And I was like, it was so much fun. Like kids are, they have that, like that light. She wants you to be her therapist. Yeah. Julia, do it. Yeah. Oh my God. She's only nine too. Oh, you have to practice your coaching. Yeah. Julia, you could say you're a life coach too to your family. You don't have to use therapy because really this isn't traditional therapy by any means. So you could say, you know, life coach. Yeah. If that that resonates with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Grab the opportunity. That sounds fabulous. Wow. Oh yeah. And I, I actually told my mom this story this morning on the phone And she was like, oh my gosh, she doesn't need therapy. What I've never thought that anything was wrong with her. Why does she think she needs therapy? And she had this totally different view about like my niece, you know, talking to someone about stuff. And my niece is over here all excited about it. Like just, I don't even know why, just to talk to someone maybe to relate. And it was like instantly shut down, like from my mom's perspective, like her thoughts were telling her, that this is bad idea. It's going to make her feel bad about herself or something. But at least life coach. No, I'm a life coach. That's positive. No. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, agree. We the I just want to say parts. hi to Khalifa. Hi, Khalifa. Khalifa in Kuwait. Do you know Martine oh, and Julia and Lynn? How are you? I think you've met them Hello. all at some Hello. point. Yeah. Hello, Lynn. Right? How are you? Hello, everyone. Good to see you. What time is it there? It's... Uh... Late. Uh, midnight, forty-six. Midnight. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're see, Julia, owl. your mom is your mom is her thinking is coming from her intellect, right? Because of yeah. what she already knows. So we have proof and evidence and uh, proof and references on what we already know to be true that we've experienced. So that's really what she's you know going by innocently because. She doesn't know any, any anything else. I mean, we all do it, right? To a certain point, we can only, nothing new can come in the intellect. So she's just sharing based on what she already knows to be true for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's no wonder she's got a bad rap about therapists. Yeah. She says the same thing in yeah. Life Gardner. Yeah. There's a bunch of therapists who are learning more from him than yeah. they are in their you know, where they go in, these big intellects are talking yeah. from their ego in their conference. Yeah. So it's no wonder. And plus, your mom works with, um, you know, like a suicide hotline, right? Yeah. And. Right. So she does, her brain does go to like worst case scenario. Sure. Yeah. Like, right. Instantly. So. Right. If you're it, not committing I, I suicide, to, like, then you're okay. Right. <laughs> it's but it is hard to find the right like terminology or at least like to be able to yeah relate to it and it differs between who you're talking to who like how they're going to receive the message you almost have to like talk from your soul yeah you know but I would definitely say exactly that's exactly right like talking Mm -hmm. from your soul yeah from big mind that's exactly right and I would definitely save your niece from a traditional therapist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. I, I told her mom also what I'm doing and um, I hope I hope that that's what happens. I'm gonna order that book, My Guide Inside and, oh, yeah. and I'm book. gonna read it to him when I get home. My, I have two oh, nieces. Cool. Very oh, nice. Cool. And you know what? It's good for them to know the truth on how life really works, really. Yeah. That's what I'm doing for my grandchildren too. As soon as they, as soon as they could read and stuff, that's it. I don't, you know, I want them to get on board. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's awesome, Julia. And Lori, you 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 have written the children book. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit older. Um, 
it's an inside out world. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I gotta How old is your niece? She, they're um, seven oh, and nine, two of them. Seven, seven and, and nine. Yeah, yeah. so the older one is, is really, she's very emotional and just in tune with her emotions. It's, it's exciting. Honestly, I want to see what she wants to get out of it. What yeah. an opportunity. Very. Yeah. You know what? I got to give it to her at nine years old for contacting you. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's, really? That's, that's think, impressive. Um, I, th I don't know who recommended her to see a therapist, but it was because her dad, my brother passed away mm -hmm. a year ago. So she, I know that hit her really hard and I think someone recommended to for her to talk to someone because of that but I don't know if I would you know traditional therapy I think they would make it all about that yes they not, would you yes, know they yeah so yeah, yeah. They, grief they, they would give her grief counseling right yes oh yes you're right see now look at already Julia the impact Oh my gosh, you gotta love it that you're having already. You see what happens? The universe, I say the universe, yeah. I don't know what else to say. The universe, you started this course and this is what happens, right? The want to, you have the how to, who knows how that's gonna unfold, it doesn't matter. So now your, your niece is brought to you, you see? This is what happens. So now yeah. this is gonna be part of the journey. I mean, how beautiful is that? It, that you it could actually like, yeah. help her. That you yeah. that she doesn't have to suffer through what they would normally do instead of you know what I'm saying. So look at the gift that that is. That's just I love that. I love that. It's no accident that you're that you're taking that yeah. course. It felt do. like meant to be because right after that course, she'd Facetime me and she never calls me oh. ever. Never oh. calls me. It's and I was I answered. I'm like this is really strange. Like. It almost like felt like my brother made this happen. Oh, like, it was like oh, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh my gosh. What a gift. Yeah. 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 The brother's probably behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How nice is that? Yeah, feels that's how this with us. That's how this works. And you know, we're Lori and I were talking about that the other day, and it's just how it works. It's uh you know, it's incredible what, how we're guided and, and what the, uh, you know, this infinite potential of, I'll say spiritual space, whatever you want to call it, that inner space of what we can create from. It's just incredible. You, you couldn't plan on that even happening, right? I mean, look at that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Great opportunity. Mm-hmm. So also Jack's book, what is a thought? What is a thought? Okay. What is a thought? You know, she'd also, the nine-year-old for sure, would definitely be old enough. Well, I don't know. You know, the thing that Ann Curtis put together called The Secret of Everything, where she interviewed a bunch of us. Um, there's a cute one, Your, your Superpower by Rudy and... and um, What's his wife's name? Rudy and uh, Jules. Jules. Yeah. That's a really cute one. Your superpower. Is that I'm a book? Putting in the chat a bunch of books that I know that exist for children. Oh, yeah. Thank oh, there you. you go. What is a thought? What is wow. wisdom? Thank yeah. you, Raheem. That's awesome. Pour le enfant. That's a. Les enfants. La font. Pour les enfants. You speak French? Yes, I do. That's my mother tongue. Yeah. Wow. I love French. Oh, it's that's yeah. Cool. English is my second language. Oh, wonderful. I love Martine's accent too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, dear so, Eliza, but that's, that's in French. Book. That that book is in French. No, no, it's because most of most of my clients are French speaking. Uh, none of those books are unfortunately translated in French, but my, many of the parents are bilingual. So if the kids don't know what to read, the, 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 the parents, they don't know the words in the book when they're reading the book. So, uh, so they can read you know, what is written, but say it in French mm -hmm. uh, or, 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 or whatever. So, um, so that's why I, I put that, this um, 
That's cool. That's awesome. The little ones. That's all you have to do is just read to them. Yeah. You know, and they'll talk. Mm -hmm. That's it, mm -hmm. really. They even had a thing, you know, I don't know if they still do this, but years ago, bibliotherapy. I don't know what they did in bibliotherapy, but I know it had to do with books. Oh my. Read that book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reading books, yeah. And do a book report for next week. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. yeah how perfect right that we have so many resources now yeah absolutely yeah I i'm glad that you know the the three pgc2 is getting out there more and more because obviously now with you know social media there's so much information out there you know i'll share this like two years ago or so i was invited to write for this digital magazine oh i was all excited And I said, yes. And I signed a contract for one year. I thought that's okay. That kind of started my writing journey. I figured I'd be forced to write an article a month. And I was only, it wasn't much. You had to pay a fee, but it was low, a low fee a month. So the more and more, you know, that I began and really going deeper and deeper in the principles, I see that this is really a self-help a clickbait magazine, how to stop anxiety in five minutes or this and that. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I don't fit in this world. So I'm like, you know, more and more that I see, and it's sad because a, a lot of these influencers were getting big attention and they were just regurgitating the same old information that's out there for self-help. And uh, it's, well, what I guess I'm getting at is there's so much misinformation that's growing more and more and more. People are out there still with this NLP stuff and trying to change your voice like Mickey Mouse and step into your circle of power. And, and you know, I mean, they're trying, they're helping people, so that's okay. But it's just, more, it's growing. Uh, these influencers out on Facebook or wherever, you know, social media, well, they don't know any of this stuff. They're just regurgitating the same info and somehow capturing audiences. But I could see I made the biggest mistake because I didn't fit into that world. It was very interesting. And, and the editor had called me. I had a conversation with him because we booked a call a couple months before and he wanted me to renew. And I said, absolutely not. I said, your magazine is not, it's against everything I believe in. I said, in my art, I can't stay here. My articles would no, no one's going to sift through what I have to say. I'm outnumbered. So he's, oh, no, 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 don't think of it that way. You know, you've got to make some clickbait headlines. I said, no, I'm not making a clickbait headline. Uh, absolutely not. You really called okay. it clickbait? Oh, yeah, like a clickbait headline. You had a hook, a hook. I'm sorry, a hook. You know, I, I'm not, I'm just writing truth. I'm not, you know, so, so it was interesting. I'm, you know, so the more that, you know, we can spread the principles, uh, I think the better. And it's great that, you know, we have communities of people out there that are doing it. Definitely. I was thinking of uh, three, uh, joining the, maybe the uh, apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. Who's? The uh, three PGCs. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. good. Oh, it's, yeah, good. Yeah. it's great. It gets it's great webinars. And, and, you know, it's really all about deepening your understanding, obviously. You know, we could never, it's infinite, right? You know, we're always beginners, I guess, right? I always say. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that nice group. group of people. That, Tom, that's how I met Tom, doing one of those. And it's you global. That would be great for you too, Julia. Yeah. Great for you. Yeah, the apprenticeship program. I, it's inexpensive. It. It's like what a hundred hundred dollars, like a hundred a year, a year or something. And so inexpensive. You know, they and do a nice so job. Much. Yeah, they do a nice, nice job. And you have access to all of the uh, the videos on there if you don't make the events, and it's nice. In fact, I think that we can show that. I'm glad that this is brought up for the heart of service. I mm -hmm. think that it's not. Um, you know, you can share it. That's what they said. I was listening to the one on thought. Are you listening to that series, Martine? That 3PGC is doing called grounding. Yeah, that's well, grounding in the principles, I think. But um, <clears throat> so they're doing, they did one, 
one day, a couple of hours on consciousness, one on mind, one on thought, and then they had, they had a recap. So I'm listening to the one on thought, Judy Sedgman, Linda Pransky, and Christine Heath. And at the end, Linda or one of them said, well, please share this with your colleagues. Okay, great. I mean, the, the, you know, it's a very generous organization because yeah, yeah. they all volunteer. Yeah, it's they do. Completely voluntary, voluntary organization. Yeah, that feels good when it's not like a money grab. Yes. You know, you, that makes you feel like, okay, this is, this is real. Like, you know, it's true. Yeah. It's not, but with a bunch of dedicated people. Yeah. Because yeah. not only do they present free, they paid for the most part. I think some of it was picked up. When I spoke at, in London, I paid, yeah, I got into the conference free. I still had to pay for my airfare, um, you know, my transportation and my hotel. Wow. That's how, that's how there's. Yeah, it's just run. a bunch of people wanting to help people. Yes. I think that's yeah. amazing. And there's so much things on the 3P world. I mean, in a sense, you could be 24 hours a day. I know. And listening to somebody talking. No about kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Absolutely. How is that group that you're a counselor and I can't think of the name of it now? Are they getting more people? Yeah, better than when it was Jan's. Um, when it was called the uh, Artfelt Presence, it, it was uh, Presence, uh, right. that was uh, the first uh, it, it, iteration of that. Uh, it was a bit more quiet. We had people, but it was quiet. And when, when Ryan took it over and called it uh, Artfelt Presence, she did more of, um, I think she might have a grant or something to, to push it uh, uh, a bit. Um, so there's always somebody. So when I'm on, there could be two people, there could be five people uh, joining uh, at a time. So a Khalifa comes once in a while. Uh, so there's there's always uh, always always people. So, yeah, when I was first volunteering for them, when it was the peaceful room, yeah, or peace room, or quiet. something like that. She, yeah, she didn't have the money to, now, right? to push it. So yeah, that uh, that's was what short she, at the beginning of COVID to help yes, people yeah. who were shut-ins yeah. because of COVID. But um, nobody came, so we would be like talking to each other. Judy came on after my hour and before me was Harry Drabitsky. We just wound up talking to each other. So I had to bow out, you yeah. know, it's been fun guys. It took I a little bit while, you, but, but I, eventually there were people, there were people. That's good. Yeah. It depends also of the hours that, yeah. that, uh, that you were in maybe. And uh, so I had, there were people and uh, and when you switch over to the art felt presence, uh, like I said, Ryan pushed it. You no, know, she she did advertise it a little bit more and went to groups to say this this exact this exists. Um, so uh, there's more people. There's more people coming in. Good. That's great. Yeah. Great. So what do you want to talk about, Khalifa? Well, you have anything? Sorry, in guys, I, I have to get going. Okay, Julia, you I'll take see care. You see you next week. Oh my gosh. Take care. It's already. The, I know. It's crazy. Does that say three o'clock? No, 502. Uh, five. 502. 502. I mean, yep. It's not going to say okay. three o'clock. We started at four. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, 502. That yeah. was a whole hour. I know I got on late, though. So, Oh, we got to let Julia know too. I don't know if you guys know, Martina, Khalifa, that. Mm -hmm. What? Sorry. <laughs> oh, we can't. We lost hear your you. sound. We lost your sound. Uh, we can't hear you, Lori. Yeah, I think. No sound. You must be wrong. Now you gotta press the button. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Let's see. Oh, she's on mute. You're 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 you're, you're on, on mute. mute. It looks like. I'll say yes. Here now. Oh, there we go. Yes. yes. Yeah. I banged it with the book. Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're doing a book club tomorrow night, and it's advertised in Mystery School. Oh, yeah. okay. And that's, but that's going to be really late for you. Oh, that'll be very late. It's, for him. Yeah, it's six o'clock. Six o'clock here for yeah. us. So. Uh, six o'clock. Uh, so that's like two a.m. for you. Right yeah, now. probably two. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> when do you sleep? secret of love <laughs> yeah we're gonna we're gonna talk about the secret of love oh the secret for the of month love. of february the month of february for the month of it. february yes yeah, oh, you you go. Go. You book and, and Chris, christine's book and uh it's a great book because it really does uh, i love it it's a uh i i think it's a, a marriage saver relationship saver when people really can see that really they're in a relationship with their thinking, not each other, right? I Which bought that know. book, uh, Laurie's yeah, book and uh, sure George's book to my sons when they, uh, their girlfriend moved in with him, with them. <laughs> I don't know if they read that. I give them to them. You. And I was thinking of getting my son and daughter-in-law one. I think that would be helpful. Oh, yeah. I said, one of my sons is more Cartesian. So you looked at it. Uh, his girlfriend was more open to it, but uh, the other one, I, I sent it directly to him. He, he lives in New Brunswick, so it's a different province. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if they're fed them, but I send them both uh, the secret of love and the relationship. And nice. both. So now it's in their hands. <laughs> Very nice. Oh. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yep. Yeah, so we're excited to have a book club tomorrow, and I think uh, it's going to be for 90 minutes, and I, I think that that'll begin to open up. The, I mean, we will never be able to touch it all, but I think, Lori, it'll be nice that we can have a few uh, key points that we talk about that people will gain some insights on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's going to just... be a game changer. Some people will be shocked, I'm sure, when they begin to, especially those who really read it, when you because this understanding is just so different than how we've all been taught yeah you know it's not you it's them i mean it's not them it's you <laughs> <laughs> i like the first one better though yeah. it's not me it's them <laughs> it's easier yeah. 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 so guys i gotta get going but um i'll see you next week if not tomorrow night Okay. Or tomorrow morning for Khalifa. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Next week Does that be the same the same Zoom link. Uh, no, oh, no, good point. it's a different Zoom link. Good point. So yeah, maybe you could set. Oh right, yeah, a different Zoom link. But it's in you, mystery school, Lori, isn't it? Because Lori, honestly, you confuse me all the time. <laughs> I, I mean, confuse you. Going. Yeah, with the Zoom links, you know. <laughs> oh, you know. Well, it's know always the I, same you know one Let for me see mystery if I school. Get it. Mystery uh, school is always the same. Mystery you, school. Mystery school is always the same. This this time is always the same. So this so this Zoom link is always the same. For this pro, for, for the Monday, school, yes. This one. So always this one the is, same. Oh, so this one is mystery school. Yes. yes. And this is mystery school. And okay. it's in the pink box on the Facebook page, the pink box with the flowers. The flowers. It should be uh, pinned at the top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put okay. it in the chat. Because, but, no, it's fine because this uh, link, I do have it in my history, in my join history in Zoom application. So it's easy to find. It was easy to find. It's going to put yeah. this in yeah. the chat anyway. And about tomorrow, can I join or it's private? Here it is. I just put it in chat. Uh, no, it's not private. It's, um, it's for a meetup group that we have. Uh, so that yeah. link that you posted now is for tomorrow. That's for tomorrow. That's our link for uh, the group. Uh -huh. We have that link in. Um, but I think you said you posted it in, in mystery school. So it's in there too. Yeah. Oh, it would be in there. Okay. Yeah, because we did put, I don't remember if we did put the link in there. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't think we're maybe yeah, I'll check. Maybe we did it because we wanted people to register before we gave them the Zoom link. We didn't want to just put a Zoom link out there. Oh, yeah, but I'll put it in for mystery school. They don't have yeah. to register. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Right. Next week, 
I won't make it for four o'clock because I'm on a um, Michael Neal's uh, all day training. Oh, nice. Um, so oh, which one? actually it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Wow. Um, and, uh, but I will, uh, it should finish around five on Monday. So I will be able to make it for uh, Bill Pittett's um, interview. You know, I'm actually wondering if we should make, we can't really make mystery school any later though, for people like, although she's not on today. Um, why can't I think of her? Vanessa, because she's in South Africa, but Jen hasn't been able to come on because she's had to stay at school for um, after school meetings. Yeah. And later would be too late for you too, right, Martine? If we go later. Well, it depends on, 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 on the week, so. Every week is different, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we should just keep it as is and yeah. <laughs> hope for the best. But anyway, have a good night, have a good morning. And <laughs> sounds good. Okay, thanks, Lori. See you soon. Bye everyone, good to nice see you. to see you. You too. Bye. 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 Stay safe and well, all of you. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you too.